I made a tips and tricks video over two months ago, sharing some important tips that I know and some new ones I learned while making the video. Well, here is another 21 tips you should know in Blender. Have your objects that you want to duplicate. Press Shift A to add the basic curve and draw your curve using the curve tool. Jump to Geometry Nodes tab, click on New, add these two nodes the curve to point node and the instances on point node drag your object or collection from your outliner menu to the geometry tab connect to instances on the instances on point node connect rotation to rotation of both nodes add the align euler to vector node and choose the best asics for which object and connect object info to the group inputs increase the length as you want on the modifier tab and now you can draw a curve and get your object distributed properly Select the face that you want to make a hole in and select both ends. Press I to insert the faces. Press Ctrl E and select the bridge head loops. To get a perfect result every any time, make sure the faces on both ends are the same number of edges. If you want high quality PBRO textures, here are a list of places you can get them both paid and free. Polyhaven.com has a big library of textures that you can download and slap on your models. Polygon.com, created by Blender Guru, 3DStextures.me, TextureScan.com, FreePBRO.com, Textures.com, and A2D.co. Select the mesh that you want to cut in edit mode. You can make a cut with whatever you want. Then align your mesh where you want the cut to go through the other mesh. Hit Ctrl F and click on Inset with the knife option, and they delete the cutter mesh and you have your insets, you can extrude or bevel it. You might encounter some issues while you're trying to extrude it as, as it won't be even. You can also create boolean operation using the intersect boolean option by selecting your geometry and adding a mesh that you want to use as the cutter and aligning it. Then hit Ctrl F and click on intersect boolean and instantly the cut happens. You can also select the boolean operation you want in the context menu in the bottom left corner. Selecting your object and click on new on the geometry tab. Shift A, search and add the curve circle node, the curve to point node and the instances on point node. Connect the group inputs to the instances of the instances on point node and connect the rotation to these two nodes. Add a align or a lot of vector node. Then you can align your axis. Connect your counts to the group inputs node and adjust your radius and increase your counts on the modifier tab to your desirable results. You can also use the spin operator where you select your objects that you want to make into an array, enter into edit mode, select the center points where you want the original points to be placed, Shift Shift S to change the position of the cursor, which can use to change the origin points. Then hit Alt E and select the spin option. And voila! Tell me in the comment section which you prefer between these two. You can recover your blend files after the original has been corrupted. Blender always have two files saved when you save a project with the glorious Ctrl S. One being the .blend file and the other being .blend1 file. If the original files get corrupt and you start panicking, just rename the file from .blend1 to .blend and you're saved. You can use the cover add-on that comes default in Blender to make some interesting cuts. Go to add-ons in preference and search cover and activate it. You should use this in the autographic view to get the best results and hitting shift ctrl x to activate the tool. You can now draw a rectangle of any size by holding left click and confirming by left clicking when you are done or pressing alt while drawing the rectangle then you can move it across the mesh. By pressing the spacebar you can go through the three cut types. When you choose the line option, you can confirm the shape that you have drawn with the space bar and with the circle option, you can cut cylindrical holes and using W and X, you can reduce or increase the number of vertices he has. The bridge tool lets you bridge two selections with no move geometry and create one and you can increase the number of segments or edges. You can also adjust the strength value in the context menu below. This tip can be used to create a hole for an object. You can select a single vertex, right click and choose circle and it can create a circle for you. You can also create a circle from a square hole by hitting 
shift alt s and then drag your mouse more on the loop tool options if you want to interpolate vertices and create a curve you can have a plane or part of your mesh select the vertex that you want the interpolation to follow and selecting them by holding shift the right click and select and choose the curve tool for the dish stretch select a roll of vertices then go to edit click on the drop down of the dish stretch panel and change use guide from none to annotations Hold D and draw a curve and then click G stretch. The vertices will follow the line drawn. You can delete the allotation strokes after you're done. You can center your 3D cursor to the world origin very fast. Normally, you would press Shift S and then select cursor to world origin. Now, you just have to press Shift C to get it back to the world origin. You can switch your bevel direction in Blender. Select the edge that you want to bevel and hit ctrl b then hit p and dragging your mouse to change the direction of your bevel you can split your mesh using the rip tool what you will do is select the edge or vertex that goes around your model and hit v and your mesh is split into two halves you can make a quick turn table of your model by adding a plane as is empty to the center of your model. Scale it up to make it easy for you to see. Select your camera and then select your empty. Hit Ctrl P and select objects, making the camera the child of the empty. Mark your keyframe at the beginning of your timeline and at the end of your animation by pressing I and play. When you download a mesh from Sketchfab, it usually comes in triangles. Well, you can convert tries to cores by selecting your mesh in edit mode and hit Alt J and the triangles will disappear. And if the tries are becoming stubborn, you can change both the face angle and the step angle to 180 degrees. That should do the job. You can duplicate an object that you want flipped without using the mirror modifier. Select the objects that you want to flip, duplicate the objects and hit Ctrl M and select your axis that you want it flips to and you're done. First off, you activate Snap. Click on the drop down and click on Face Project. Change Snap Width to Center and click on Align Rotation to Target. And when you duplicate your objects and move it around the surface of the other object, it aligns itself. You can change the shape of your objects without stretching the textures. When you scale or extrude your mesh that has textures on it, it messes up the textures. To fix this, while in edit mode, go to the two settings and other options. You can select correct face attributes and now you can scale and extrude your, your object without stretching the textures. You can bend an object using Shift W. Note that you must have a mesh with considerable amount of subdivisions for better results. If you want a curve to be on the surface of your mesh, you can add a curve, jump to edit mode, delete the curve, click on the draw tool and change the projection from cursor to surface. And now you can draw your curve over the surface of your mesh. You can link materials from one mesh to another mesh or several meshes. Select the objects that you want the materials to be linked to and select the objects that has the material last. Click Ctrl L and click on Link Materials. Having all these tips at your disposal will give you more power to conquer Blender. Check out this video for more power.